Hi there, I'm Julie Giardini and I have been a full-time artist for almost 30 years and I had the honor of being selected by Ambassador Lynch to be included in the artwork that she's showing at the residence and the pieces that she's showing of mine are from my boat series. I have a couple more here just to show you some examples of other boat series I've done. Um, I wanted to tell you the inspiration for these particular sculptures. The boat forms to me are a symbol of transportation and I think that's a metaphor for the way we travel through our lives and the boat is such an iconic uh, vessel that when we think about how things change and evolve for me the boat is something that has always been just a perfect example of that so I hope you've been enjoying them. The pieces that are at the residence are called Navigation, um, sorry, Celestial Navigation One, and the other one is called Vessel of Knowledge. And that one has lots of books in it and they're kind of stacked within the vessel. And it, to me, that was just such a beautiful idea of knowledge pouring forth so um, I construct them of steel and then I add different medium to them like paper, uh, the books. This one has some gold leaf. I do some different patina treatments and things like that. So hope you were enjoying them and I'm so sorry I can't be there in person and uh, look forward to meeting you in the future. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Ken Giardini and uh, I have been an artist for most of my life actually, full time for about 30 years and uh, I was fortunate to be selected by Ambassador Lynch to have my artwork there in the embassy and the pieces that you have there are LaGrange Point 2 and Science is the Doorway. LaGrange Point 2 and LaGrange Point 1 which is here behind me uh, were inspired by a lecture that I saw uh, by the leading NASA scientist on the James Webb Space Telescope project, John Mather. Uh, and it inspired me enough to really look into um, Lagrange points and, and how we use them to place our stationary satellites in orbit. That inspired me to do the research and, taught, and find out about the range points and what they were. And that, with my NASA experience and my art experience, gave me a chance to really explore orbits and the abstract nature of space itself. Um, the use of the Saturn V rocket that's in that piece, as well as this piece, and also um, Science is the Doorway, is because as a uh, child, I guess I was in 1960, I was maybe 10 years old uh, uh, when uh, we landed on the moon. So I really was influenced by that event and for years wanted to be an astronaut. I did get to work for NASA, but I never quite got to go into space. But I really was able to be there in the control room supporting the the astronauts, uh, especially later on in the, in the space shuttle program as well. So I really, really felt fortunate to be part of that. Uh, more than that though, I'm feeling very fortunate to be part of, or to be an artist. To be an artist uh, has been a lifelong passion. Um, I do everything from photography, metalwork, mixed media, painting. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of elements in my work that I bring together and really make them, uh, I think, cohesive. So, I hope you're enjoying the artwork. I'm always open to questions. You can contact me through the website and uh, reach out. I'm always happy to answer questions about the work uh, and I hope you're enjoying it. By the way, Science is the Doorway is the, the title of the other piece. I just 
I just think that if the world understood that, we would be in a lot better place. So thank you for uh, including me in this, in this exhibition and uh, uh, allowing me to be part of this. Hello, I'm Evelyn Lynch, and I am so flattered to be asked to show some of my artwork at this very wonderful program at the residence of the ambassador for her program on travel. I, I have so many of my paintings are being shown in this uh, display. I really started my interest in painting a long time ago. And when I was in, living in Germany, I met a, an art teacher, Kurt Schmidt, and I took up oil painting with him. And he uh, showed me how to uh, show perspective and mixing colors and all the basics of uh, painting. I did some work in oils and uh, I enjoyed doing it very much. I gave up my painting when I came home to the United States as I had more family obligations. I was a school nurse and also had two more children. And uh, so I did stay home and do take care of them. And while during that time, I took up stained glass. And I was very happy doing stained glass. I made a few lamps and enjoy have them in my home right now. And I enjoy doing that. Then I decided that I would go back to painting, which was my first love. And I did uh, first oils. And then I changed to, I did a few watercolors and I changed to acrylics. And I have done many acrylics so my children have enjoyed. I have many of them in their houses. And I have sold a number of pieces also. I really have enjoyed painting very much and I'm very happy to have added to your display here at the uh, ambassador res Ambassador's Residence. Thank you, bye-bye. Hi. I'm Josh Simpson, and I'm a glass blower. Molten glass is a mix of sand and metallic oxides combined with extraordinary blinding heat. The result is a material that flows like honey. When it's hot, glass is alive. It moves gracefully in response to gravity and centripetal force. It possesses an inner light and brilliant radiant heat that make it simultaneously one of the most fascinating and one of the most frustrating materials for an artist to work with. Glass has held my attention for 50 years now, which is amazing because I have interests that scatter me in a hundred other directions. Physics, chemistry, and the workings of the universe fascinate me. I'm mesmerized by color, form, contrast, complexity, and the properties of light. But most of all, I love fire. When I was a kid, I climbed trees and tall rocks to get a different view of the world. Today, I love the unique perspective I get by flying my own little airplane. In 1969, the Apollo astronaut Jim Lovell looked out his spacecraft window and observed that he could cover the Earth with his thumb. He made me realize that our Earth, that seems so vast and limitless, is also just like a little blue marble floating in the black void of space. And so I began to make my own planets. Planets are solid glass spheres meant to look like imaginary worlds that might exist somewhere in the universe. In these globes, you can sometimes imagine swirling oceans, continents perhaps teeming with life, or signs of alien spaceships orbiting in the atmosphere above. The large megaplanet here at the embassy is one of my favorites. It has vibrantly colored landscapes, blue oceans, and mysterious structures. Planets are made by gathering a molten core of glass from my furnace and adding layer after layer of various elements that depict details I see in my mind. My interest in astronomy and astrophysics also takes form in large circular plates that I call stellar disks. Two of these disks are on display here at the embassy. Like planets, stellar disks also begin with a gather of molten glass. But to make a disc, I expand the shape by blowing through my blowpipe to produce a thin-walled bowl form. 
Sometimes I add a contrasting color around the lip. The piece is then further enlarged using special tools. The pattern on the surface of each disc is created by melting silver and other metals into the glass to form swirling patterns of color. The final step is to spin the bowl on my pipe as fast as I can to flare it out into a disc shape. My studio is a converted dairy barn in Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts. Every night, the last thing I do is walk from the house to my studio to check on the furnaces. Sometimes seeing an aurora borealis, watching a thunderstorm forming down the valley, or just looking at the sky on a perfect summer night compels me to translate some of the wonder of the universe into my glass. Hi, I'm Ann Brower, and I'm so honored to have two of my quilts, Green Circle and Pluto is a Planet, in the show at the Art and the Embassies in Georgetown, Guiana. Thanks, Ambassador Lynch. I can't really tell you all the details of those quilts, but I thought I'd show you another one. Look at all these individual fabrics I use, one at a time, sewn onto the back. Little stars, bits of sky. There are stories here. Create your own. There's a little more sky, and from a distance, it creates a hole. Then I machine quilt sewing through all layers to give more substance and texture. This is the back of the quilt, very detailed. So anyway, those are my quilts. I make them all in Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts. Enjoy!